What up, everybody? Thanks for checking us out. Welcome to Brando's World of X Games. Really excited about our next guest. She is the owner of two X Games gold medals. She is Mariah Duran. Mariah, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. How about yourself? Uh, I cannot complain. Um, I guess the necessary question that we always ask our guests each week is uh, Q Team, global pandemic. How's, uh, how's quarantine life? been for you i assume you've been home in uh in albuquerque yeah i um thankfully uh got home before all of this kind of hit um yeah it was uh it was pretty intense i was like you know like last year was full of contests and then a bit like i had like kind of like a four month break so i was working on a video project and then um when that kind of like happened i just got back from spain and then the whole kind of quarantine happened. So I like was here, thank goodness, here in New Mexico. So all I've been doing pretty much like for the first couple of months, I was like, I don't know what's going on. So I'm just going to chill, you know, recover my body, like do a little bit here and there just to kind of see where everything was at, um, was kind of quarantining here at my apartment and then at my parents' house. And then kind of just like skating, like my parents' backyard. Cause I got like a slab of concrete that I put back there. And then we were just kind of like making some stuff, you know, making do with what we had. Um, but yeah, quarantine, it wasn't easy at first going from such a amazing like travel, like back to back to back to back. And then all of a sudden like you're home and it was just intense, not gonna lie. Um, but thank God I had uh, my family and my two brothers kind of got me through that. Um, and yeah, and now I'm here like, slowly easing back into everything kind of in a I think a lot better way more so which is nice yeah I you just mentioned something I think you have the best of both worlds Mariah because you're living on your own right you have your own spot but right. like when you do like want to step your skate game up you can go and just pour some fresh concrete in mom and dad's <laughs> backyard so it's like you could still utilize the perks of uh of mom and pops while still living on your own I like that Oh yeah, and my parents love it too. You know, they'll put out their picnic chairs and just watch us skate. It's like I feel more nervous than as if I'm like in a concert skating in front of me. Like, you don't want to fall in front of your parents. Like, of course they go to my contest, but like when it's just them watching, it's just like ah, oh, like you just kind of embarrassed. Wow. Okay, so the backyard session in Albuquerque with just mom and dad sitting right. down at the picnic table. More nervous for you than like being at US Bank Stadium in Minneapolis with like 15,000 fans. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's just cause you know, like when you fall, like my mom and dad are still like, are you good? You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like, am I good? You know, whereas like in the stadium, you just like, you know, there's going to be nerves. And you know, if you fall, you just get right back up. You have like this adrenaline, you know what I mean? So I don't know, it's like different. <laughs> yeah. You know, I have uh, my brothers that like, skate with me too so it like makes it less you know less intimidating <laughs> i have i have a follow-up question to that but before we get into it we do this every week with each of our guests we do 20 questions in the hot box we try to time it to see who's the fastest at the end of the year we'll let you know but uh mariah duran are you ready for the hot box is it just questions and then i just answer them that's it super easy <sighs> okay you get the timer going are you ready? I'm ready. And begin. Uh, fries or tater tots? Fries. Favorite fast food in New Mexico? Mmm, stuffed sopapillas. First CD you ever bought? Uh, Rihanna, like SOS, I think. <laughs> Which four states make up the four corners? Uh, Texas, Colorado, Arizona, uh, four corners. Oh, I'm blanking. All right, next question. <laughs> Favorite Will Ferrell movie? Oh, Land of the Lost. No way. I was not expecting that. Favorite cereal? Um, Honey Bunches of Oats. Favorite holiday food? Uh, enchiladas. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Favorite Harry Potter movie? Um... Prisoner of Azkaban. This one's a tough one. Adidas or Nike? Adidas. <laughs> Favorite pizza topping? 
Uh, green chili. Ooh. Better place to celebrate a gold medal, Australia or Minneapolis? Minneapolis. What was your very first skateboard? Uh, it was an Element Van Majera Pro Model. Ooh. Better Mountain Dew flavor, Code Red or Baja Blast? Baja Blast, all the way. <laughs> MJ or LeBron? Oh, MJ, because I just saw his documentary, so MJ. Last dance. Uh, go to Netflix show to fall asleep to. The Office. Of course. There's only one answer to that. <laughs> if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Um, time travel. Spirit animal. What is it? Uh, I don't know. Maybe a uh, elephant. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> ice cream or cake? Uh, ice cream. Favorite place in the world to go skateboarding? Mmm, London. Damn, I'm not gonna lie. Two minutes, 15, 39 seconds. I'm, I don't wanna get ahead of myself, but this might be the fastest we've had so far. Congratulations, Mariah Duran. I don't wanna crown you yet. Don't crown but, me yet. Don't gas me up yet, but. But, but you <laughs> might have done it. You might have done it. Uh, thank you for entering the hot box, Miranda. And not only did you answer so quickly, but you had some just out of complete left field that I was not expecting. I never yeah. thought in a million years. I didn't know anybody liked Land of the Lost as a movie, let alone it be their favorite Will Ferrell movie. You have. Congrats on that. Yeah, I watched that like probably a million times. And it's funny <laughs> every time. Like me and my brothers will do scenarios at the dinner table. And would basically watch the whole movie. And you're just quoting it? That's fine. Yeah, all the time. Um, well, before we got into the 20 questions, um, we brought up something about skating in front of crowds and or, and or in front of your parents. I'm curious for you, um, now that pro sports is picking back up and it's cool watching like the NBA games in the bubble with like the digital fans. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what your takeaway uh, would be in um, in a scenario like that for skateboarding. Uh, would you want to skate in an empty arena or would you want like the digital fans or like the cardboard cutouts? Would that do anything for you? Do you have a preference? Do the players get to see the digital fans or no? They say they do. Yeah, it's like it's like digital board screen. So they're kind of yeah, like in the periphery. More like nerve wracking maybe. I don't know. Um, Interesting. I would love the crowd though. I feel like yeah. that that gives you such a a vibe um, when you're skateboarding. It just makes it feel so real. Um, but if it turns to the virtual reality, hey, like I'm all for new stuff. Um, I guarantee there would be like a whole different type of nerves because it's not like physical people, but you know that you're being broadcasted, you know? So it would be very interesting to kind of just uh see what that would be um virtually i mean that's kind of crazy if they like see like the people in the stands so that would be that's wild yeah i'm just obviously we all want sports to come back we all want contests to come back we want the x games to come back obviously under healthy and, and the right pretenses so it's just been really interesting to see you know different sports doing different things and it just begs the question on you know, what the, the future or the immediate future might look like for our world, but uh, but we shall see. But Mariah, I, 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 it's interesting because I feel like, um, not feel like, I know for a fact, since you started skating at X Games, I have called all of your contests, but yet I've never really gotten a chance to talk to you. So I've always really like wanted to get to know you a little bit better. Um, Tell so me about growing up. Yeah, I'm like, I, I feel like it, if you've watched the highlight or if you've watched Mariah Duran skate at X Games, you've heard my voice. So we're, we're right there together, you and I. Um, but I, I'm I'm curious, like growing up in uh, in Albuquerque, like like you, you mentioned your brothers. I mean, are those are they older, younger? Are you in the middle? How did that work? How did yeah, you get into skating? Yeah, I'm the middle child. Um, my older brother picked up skateboarding, so... We're a year apart, so we're always really close. I kind of just did whatever he did, uh, like if it was baseball or whatever, whatever. Like I was always kind of intrigued by whatever he did. Um, I just felt like it was more fun. And when he picked up a skateboard, I was like, yo, I want to do this. It was hard to convince my mom because um, I'm the only girl, uh, but it's all good. Uh, further along the line, she got on board. I got a 
like I was able to get a skateboard and then um yeah my little brother he's uh four years younger than me so we've all kind of picked up skateboarding at the same time and it was really cool because it was kind of like we always did sports and then we do skateboarding and it would work out for my parents because they knew what to get us for Christmas um or like if we went on a vacation they would just drop us off at the skate park for like five hours and we would be like in heaven and then they could just go do their thing you know what I mean so it really worked out and it was good to kind of have like brothers around because like who's gonna be more real than like your brothers you know they're gonna tell you what's up straight up you know not gonna hold back um so they've always kept me very grounded but also like super hyped on skateboarding and we kind of all just like feed off of each other pretty much so how old were you like when you first really started getting into skating um i was like around 10 like 10 okay. but i was doing so, other sports yeah. like on the side it was all i was doing like softball um basketball track so i was always doing it on the side pretty much what was it just your brother that got like brothers that got you into it was there at that point maybe once you started really pursuing skateboarding was there someone that like you were sort of looking up to like a pro or a contest or a video like you remember kind of being really influential for you when you first got going um so like i was uh so when my older brother kind of picked it up i kind of became friends with all of his friends and it was just it was just cool we all kind of were learning skateboarding at the same time and then as things went along, um, I started falling more in love with it. So then, like, I think I remember seeing, like, Alyssa Steamer in, like, a Tony Hawk game or something. And, uh, like, one of her parts and, like, all my friends would be, like, like they, they were always into video games. And, like, I would kind of just sit there and watch them play. But, like, they were, like, yo, like, look at this, like, little, like, clip of, like, this girl skating. And it was just so sick to see, like, another female skateboarding. For some reason, I was just, like, wow, like, that's so sick because – in a way, I kind of always felt like a little bit of an outcast. I was like the only girl who pulled up at the skate park. But I was like legit there to like slam. And it was just, you know, it was it was cool because I didn't really care. But there was always like a little part of like, man, I'm kind of like the only girl. You know what I mean? But like my brother and his friends were like super supportive. And I would still say that they're my closest friends till this day, which is amazing about skateboarding. And um yeah, so when I kind of saw like that first clip of uh, Alyssa Steamer, and um, after that, I remember seeing like Marissa Del Santo on Zero, and then that kind of like secured like my mentality of like, yo, I want to get that good, and I and it's possible. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned obviously you had a great support system with your brothers and your and their homies, and that's cool at the skate park. But as you said maybe sometimes being the only girl, like, did you ever feel, not, I don't know if hated on, but did you ever feel flack sometimes for being the only girl from like maybe other people at the skate park? Was that, was that tough for you? Did you feel like more eyes were on you because oh, you might've been the only female at the time? Uh, yeah, there was a lot more eyes on me. Um, but you know what I mean? Like I cared too much about skateboarding to like not let that get in the way. Like, of course, I would get right. pulling up to a skate park and be like, oh, like, but at the end of the day, like, once I started skating, I was like, you know, I don't care. Like, even if I slam, whatever, like, I'm still going to do it. Um, and no one really, like, made it weird, uh, thank goodness. But it was definitely, like, it was definitely, like, I was, like, kind of just sticking with my brothers the whole time, just kind of, like, trying to get, you know, like, just skate in a way. They didn't really care, like. They didn't really treat me any different because I was their sister. You know what I mean? Right. No, man, I, I, that's awesome. I love to hear that because I think sometimes, you know, as we continue to push more for um, women skateboarding and equal rights and equal pay and have the same amount of contests because y'all absolutely deserve that. Um, sometimes I think what gets lost is like the beginnings for um, a lot of you ladies and and just that feeling sometimes of, maybe being ostracized or feeling like you're the only girl at the skate park. And sometimes that's can be an obstacle in and of itself. And I think sometimes people take that for granted or don't realize, you know, that that challenge that's presented and can you overcome that or block that out and just be like, I'm here to skate. So that's really rad to hear. Right. Yeah, definitely been super blessed to just, I think it helped just to have like my brothers around though. It was kind of yeah. like comfort kind of, kind of deal. Like, you know what I mean? So that was that really helped the whole scenario. But yeah, like 
I mean, well, nowadays it's a lot better. Like I see a lot of girls getting out, like hitting each other up, going out and skating, like just to go out and skate, which is beautiful. Like I, you know, I wish I had that, but then again, I wouldn't change what I had because at the end of the day, like I made like some of my closest friends, like during that period of time and they just happen to be guys, but you know what I mean? Like they're all like super rad and it's, it's crazy. Cause like I went through like middle school and high school, but yet like the, this select group of like my skate friends are always like there, which is beautiful. So it must've been wild for you because you are, you're 23 now. Is that right? 23. Yeah. So obviously you've been skating in, in pro contests for, you know, the better part of four or five years now. So yeah, you know, high school age. So, so you were still going to high school and you were skating in these contests like on TV. I mean, that might have been surreal. It was it was very surreal. I remember uh, my senior year, I just kind of quit all my sports. <laughs> um, I mean, just because like I like had a conversation with my basketball coach and he's just he like he's very real. And he just like told me like, yo, like, aren't you like he wasn't saying like, don't play. But he was saying, take advantage of the opportunity that you have. Like, aren't you like one of the only girl skateboarders like out here that is at a good level and stuff like this? Like, maybe you should try to like give that energy into that because he kind of saw that I was kind of like getting away from basketball a little bit. And um, that kind of just clicked in my head like, yo, like, yeah, like I'm just going to not do any sports senior year. And I think that year I got invited um, as an alternate, um, which was which was like amazing because I was like wow I can't believe that this is like a thing you know I never would have thought I'd be here um but yeah like those like the first years of like kind of getting into the pro contest were kind of it was like intense but in a the most beautiful way because it was like man I had to like to be honest I like fundraised like I had like a breakfast uh like a pancake thing over here um, and I had a fundraise for my first two X Games just to get me out there because you know, at the time, like, I didn't have any big sponsors um, and it was just expensive to get out there. But, like, my parents were like, what What the other, like, baseball and uh, softball and all that stuff taught us was, like, you could fundraise your way to get in there. And I thought it was kind of weird, but I wanted to get there so bad. So I was just like, all right, like, we organized, like, a fundraiser and, like, put it out on Facebook and then, like, people showed up and we were able to like not only get me out there, but like my family out there. And we like, we drove. Um, I think we drove, it was like, uh, I forget. I think the first one that I was an alternate, it might've been in Texas. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, in Austin. Super humid. Mm -hmm. um, but that was the most amazing thing I've ever had. And I was an alternate. I've never, I got to meet Marissa Del Santo, like my favorite skater ever. Um, I like got to skate the course with her. I got to skate the course with all these people that I've just seen on the internet and it was like surreal. And I didn't even care that I wasn't even really in the contest. I was just like, yo, I'm going to like leave it all here. Like, you know what I mean? Because like, this is like, this is like what I've been wanting so bad. So like, yeah, being an alternate, um, was definitely such a good thing. Cause it was a nice way to ease my way into it. You know what I mean? I felt like I got the satisfaction of being in the contest, but not really being in it, but like practice, practicing super hard, meeting everybody kind of starting to get my name out there. So that was really awesome. How did you, how did you, how did that first invite even as an alternate come about? Did I, at that point, did you have a relationship with like Mimi Noop? Uh, like how did that come to be? No, it, was, it was crazy. Um, like I want to say like five months before that, maybe. Uh, my dad like sent out an email, like random to like Lisa who owns me out skateboards. And she was like, did the, um, girls organization on YouTube, uh, the girls skate network on YouTube. And, um, I watched all the videos, whatever. And like, my dad knew I was like super into it. And he like emailed her and I was like, dad, she's never going to see the email. Like, why are you wow. doing this? And like, <laughs> she saw the email and it was like, Hey, like my dad, like basically wrote like, Hey, like my, my daughter, like, cause I was just competing here locally in like guys contests and stuff. And I would do kind of, I would do pretty good. Um, I would like place at least. And, um, he was like, emailed her was like, Hey, my daughter's really good at skating, but she only competes locally. She's trying to get her name out there. What can we do to, 
you know, like give her a chance to like skate with these girls. And she wrote back like, hey, go to Wheels of Fortune, which is in Seattle. And that was kind of like my first contest where I got to see uh, Vanessa Torres and like all of those like top dogs that were there. And um, we like kind of like did a little bit of a fundraiser to get to Seattle. And um, that was like right before our X Games. So I remember skating in that contest. I kind of saw my level. And then I guess uh, Lisa and Mimi were kind of organizers there. And they kind of saw the level that I was at. So they're like, hey, like, would you be down to be an alternate? Like, this is like a couple months later. Like, would you down? Would you be down to be an alternate at um, X Games? And I was just like, yes, absolutely. Yeah. You know? Um, but, yeah, I think that it was good because when my dad sent that email, like, Lisa also asked, like, hey, is there any footage? Because, like, we didn't we didn't record any of the contests. So she didn't even really know my level. But I would just go out and film with my brothers and my friend and we had a camera and I was basically working on like a street part be for fun like not a sponsor me or whatever like it was just like a street part like I was just with the with the homies and we just did that so we sent that over that got the invite to Seattle and then from Seattle kind of got into a or yeah got did an alternate in X Games so that was I, it was it was crazy how it was like piecing together it was so random Dude, that is so wild, Mariah. Mariah. And that's what I love. I love stories like this because I think people just assume if they see you on TV, oh, they're taken care of or they're rich or they got all these sponsors. And and like the early days of like your dad sending out a mass email and you're like, dad, what are you doing? And yeah. fundraising to get to a contest. And then you get there and then the powers that be sport organizers being there being like, Hey, what if we invited you like that? Like that's so beautiful because like, that's what this journey is, is all about. And like, there sometimes really are no handouts. And I think every story has got this amazing Genesis to it. And that's what I love about yours. Yeah. I think it unraveled, um, the most, mm -hmm. the best way it possibly could have done because it was like my first year, I wasn't doing any sports, but yet somehow this skateboarding thing was being clicked together so random and i was like yo like this is insane how this is happening right now like right i've never thought that but it unraveled um at a really good time for me and then kind of getting out of that like i think i did like a semester of uh college after i skated uh in x games and i was an alternate in chicago for the first street league and like I remember like I used like my college scholarship to like <laughs> buy my plane tickets and uh, I uh, was able to kind of just make it happen. You know, as I was an alternate too, like that not, I wasn't even guaranteed to be even in the contest, but I was like, yo, I, there was nothing I wanted to spend my money on more than that. So I like kind of did that. My dad like drove from Albuquerque to Chicago, like with my little brother to meet me there. Like it was insane. And like, I was just an alternate, skated best trick um, when we weren't even really supposed to skate best trick, but <laughs> still right. skated, got recognized. Um, and then after that, like, it was just kind of like a snowball effect. Like, it was more like putting things, like the randomest things, like into existence, just trusting something that wasn't even really guaranteed, but just like going for it. God, that's so, that's so impressive. And that, I, I hope fans at home or you know if there's young girls out there watching this right now going oh my god i i want to be the next mariah duran you the power is in your hands you know put put yourself out there into the universe and uh and don't be afraid to uh to figure out a way to to get where you need to be because look at you now that's that's amazing i, I love that and and within only a couple of years mariah you got on the x games podium i remember you got a silver medal Bro, in Austin in 2016 changed my life um and I don't want to say it like like it genuinely did because of course it would be beautiful to like I skated in X, the X Games before and I think I took like eighth place or something but I was just like man like that was I was my first time ever doing it you know like I didn't come out the bat like gold medal first try like no nah, like it was just like at the time even when I took silver I was still like having a fundraise to get out there and um when I took silver, I knew exactly what I was gonna get. I was gonna, I was gonna buy me a car. I was like, dude, I need to buy me a car so I could drive to Cali or drive to anywhere I need to be um, to make like this skate thing happen. Like everything I did was 
was basically for skateboarding. Like whatever I spent my money on was like to like improve my skateboarding, whether it's like get me a car to drive me over here so that I can, you know, skate for a little bit and then like come back, you know? So the first, like that was my first thing that I did was like, I was like, yo, I bought a car off of Craigslist and like still have the car till this day, but um, took that. What kind, of, what kind of car? What is it? It was a Nissan Xterra. <laughs> yeah. Because I was like, yo, I need, I need a road trip one. Like I need one that's kind of big. I'm not going to get like a two person car. Like I'm like, I'm trying to take the homies. Like we're, we're trying to go, you know? So we, uh, I got that and then took that so many times. Like I feel like I've dri driven that to California probably more than a hundred times. Whoa. More than a hundred times. Easy. We drove it to Minneapolis one time. Like it was, it's like something that was like, yo, like, this i'm gonna get this car and i'm gonna put miles on it and it's like so that silver medal like really allowed me to to do that you know what i mean um and i just knew that that was like very important to me to just not have to worry about plane tickets you know because those are pretty expensive like i got like a brothers who brothers who are like down to drive or my dad's down to drive so i'm like yo like it's cheaper we just put gas in it and we all can go you know what i mean so that was always kind of like the thing you know and you got that Xterra money when you got that silver medal. Oh, but you know, one of my favorite, actually one of my favorite images from that X Games, I remember because Austin, um, unfortunately, uh, great contest, but weather was just wild. And I'll never forget it was raining before y'all's contest. And uh, I know you ladies weren't trying to get rained out. And I remember seeing a young Mariah Duran out there drying the course. And yeah. uh, and I I, I, didn't, I don't know if we showed that in broadcast, but I just thought that was no, amazing to so, like watch. Like I'm not, we're not missing this contest. Like we're doing this. Thing. Blower on too. The blower, yeah, you had the blower. On. I was like, yo, <laughs> let's go. You know what I mean? It was just cool because all the girls were like down to like help because it was just it was just unfortunate. Like it's something you can't really control. You can't control the weather, um, yeah. but you can control how you like bounce back from it. So I was just like, you know what? I'm here. You know, like I, that's just a part of me that's like, yo, I want to help. Like, you know what I mean? There was only a couple of workers, but like, we're just like, where the squeegees, like we all just started like getting it, you know? So yeah. And then well, ended up taking silver. <laughs> wow. And then uh, you weren't done then. Fast forward to uh, your first X Games gold medal, X Games Minneapolis. Um, that was amazing. That was such a great contest. You're talking about the best of the best being out there under that roof uh talk to us about that moment and what that contest meant so like building up like i uh i was just like on one like it was just like one of those things like i didn't care if i took 10th i didn't care if i took <laughs> like i was like yo like i'm gonna show up and i'm gonna show out pretty much like i told myself like when we got to minneapolis um I think I just picked up an Adidas sponsor. So I was like, I was like gassed. I was able to quit my job that year. So I was like, yo, this is, this is it. You know what I mean? And um, so I, uh, I was just going into X Games. Like I knew it wasn't everything for me, but I knew that it was like a part of me that was like, yo, like just show up and just do your best and don't put any pressure on yourself. Like the more pressure you put on yourself, like it's hectic because I went from silver place to not even placing the next year. And then this time I was just like, man, like I'm here, like how am I gonna go about this? I felt two extremes of emotion, like really sad because I didn't make it and really happy because I podium. So I was like, okay, well, both times at the end of the day, I was still gonna be a skateboarder. You know what I mean? So I was like, all right. So I told myself in my head that I'm gonna do all the tricks that I love doing to the point where I'm like looking forward like just can't wait to step on my board to skate and the course was like beautiful i was just like everything was working out and i was doing all of my favorite tricks like after every trick like i remember i messed i blew it on the first run i remember but in my head i was like it's all good like it's not over until it's over you know so i just remember i was just like yo i'm gonna land the first trick landed the first trick and then i started feeling like super good and i was just like yo i'm like landing everything like I wasn't like, and it was, everything was just working out so perfect that I was like, I'm, I'm like gassed up like the whole time throughout my run. And I was just like, wow. And then got to end it with like a ghetto bird. And like that people who have 
grown up with me. Like that has been my trick for so long. Like I would pull up to my local park, like when I was like 14, 15 and just boom, just like do ghetto birds. They were tiny, they were tiny, but you know, like being able to just like end it with that, it was kind of just like a, like a, it was like the best feeling, you know? And then like to be able to be ranked like first, like I was just like, man, like that's such a good feeling because I did everything that I wanted to do and I didn't put any pressure on myself. And I like landed all my tricks and it was just, it was just a great moment for sure. You, well, you, you, you might have answered my next question, and that is, do you have a, a favorite trick looking back at like your X Games career that you look back on and you're like, oh, I love that I landed that trick. What is that, that for you? Minneapolis was definitely, I think that whole like vibe was just like, I was just, everything just felt good about it. Like starting off with the front feeble was risky, but I don't know. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> trick I like loved doing genuinely. You know, so I was looking, for, I was losing sleep because I was looking forward to it so much. And um, I would say ghetto bird because I felt like that was the most powerful way I could have ended my run because it felt it to me. Like, I don't even care if like the judges didn't like it or anything. They just so happened they did. But like, for me, like that was like my 15 year old self, like, yo, like I'm here. I showed up. You know what I mean? Like that was like the best feeling. Yeah, and I think that's what it boils down to in our world. Sometimes it's those personal achievements because it's so counterintuitive, I, I think, especially with skateboarding, to be overly competitive, right? It's, it's about bringing out the best in yourself and doing something that you want to do. And whether that impresses the judges or not is, is somewhat moot. Obviously, it worked out in your favor, but you hear that all the time. It's like, I don't care what I place. I did the run I wanted to do or I landed the trick I wanted to land. So I mean, I feel good. You're competing with yourself. Like it's you versus your trick. Like, how are you going to do good if you don't land your trick? You know, how are you going to, you know what I mean? So it's, it's just, it's like a, you're competing against other skaters, but if you get to the point where you know exactly what tricks are good and you know that you can do them at that point, you're like, it's just me versus this trick now. Like everything else is zoned out. It's not like we have like defense or anything like like basketball. You know what I mean? So it's a very individual, but you have to hold yourself hold yourself like accountable and like just understand that like you have good days and you have bad days. Like it it happens. You know what I mean? It's all part of the game. Like you land your tricks and you or you slam really hard. It's like the skater's mentality to like keep going and get back up which is crazy. Well, fast forward, the year of Mariah continued in 2018 because you went back to back with a gold at, uh, at X Games Sydney. Um, that was a wild one as well. So like, I, I, I'm assuming, I'd love to just hear your thoughts on that contest, but just like after going two for two, gold Minneapolis, gold Sydney, you must have felt, I mean, on one for sure. But like, I, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that contest wise. Yeah. I mean, contest wise, of course. Um, but for me, it wasn't like when I went into Sydney, I wasn't trying to hold the title. I wasn't, I didn't tell myself like, Oh, I have the gold medals title. Like in my head, I was like, all right, this is like the same thing as Minneapolis. Like nothing is going to be just given to you pretty much. Like you have to go into every contest. Like, yo, I have to work for it. I did great. The last one. That's beautiful. Or you could have done really bad the last one and this was like your redemption like you have to understand that like it's a it's a growing process um and that's what i love about skateboarding is because it um constantly pushes you whether you're in front of a crowd like x games or whether you're in front of your parents in the backyard <laughs> like it's it's a it's crazy but yeah sydney was definitely one of those ones where i was like you know what i'm i'm just gonna do what i love doing i'm gonna create another run that I can't wait to like do and that like I'm gonna feel super confident when I land the whole thing. Like I'm looking forward to it. Like it had enough push for me to, for it to be kind of like a difficult one, but it had enough like, I guess, emotion wise, like to make me feel good whenever I did my tricks. You know what I mean? So Sydney was one of those ones and it was crazy cause I didn't have my family with me. Like Minneapolis, I had my family with me we drove out, you know, that was like the memorable like one. That was like the one that counted the most. 
Um, and for this one, it was like Sydney, the farthest place in the world. Like, yeah, they're not they're not driving from Albuquerque to. Uh, yeah, like, to <laughs> so I was like, man, like, but in my head, I was like, hey, it's like the same thing. And it's like, even if you took 10th, like you're still going to be a skateboarder at the end of the day. Like, don't mm. get so down on yourself because I tend to do that sometimes, especially in contests. You can either like make or break yourself. But that's like pretty much on you. Like, yeah, of course you could be upset like for one day, maybe the day after, but don't ever like categorize yourself as like that number and limit yourself that. Like mm -hmm. when I when I like took 10th, I was like, or like eighth or 10th, I don't know which one, but like, I was like, I'm not ranked 10th. Like my skateboarding isn't ranked 10th. I just didn't skate the well that day. So like, even when I took first, I was like, wow, like I landed all my tricks, but you know, like I, probably still would have felt the same if I would have took like 10th you know what I mean like mm -hmm. I just told myself like you're here to just push yourself in this moment pretty much and Sydney was just one of those ones where I like kind of stepped it up to got out of my comfort zone of not having my family around but still performing at my best yeah. um and the funnest thing was like I mean in my run when I did like the flip front board I was like man like I never throw that out there but I was like, why not? Like, if I'm not pushing myself as a skateboarder, like, then I'm like, I'm wasting my own time. You know what I mean? So mm. Sydney was beautiful because that was kind of like, yo, I can do it with my family and I can do it without my family. Cause they like, I was still calling them and stuff, but you know what I mean? Like it was mm -hmm. a very, like a uh, very good contest. I think I, I took away a lot from that one. You mentioned going into that year, or like right before <clears throat> X Games Minneapolis, you had signed the uh, Three Stripes, the Adidas deal. And I look at Adidas Skate Team, and I, I mean, it is it is legendary. I, it is such an eclectic group of amazing skateboarders, certainly headlined by people like yourself and Nora V Explorer, Day One Song. Gone, Silas Baxter, Neil, like like some of the heaviest names in skateboarding. Like, what was that courtship like from Adidas? And like, that must have just blown your mind when they were showing interest in you. Like, how did that like relationship come about? Um, I think that that like me getting into Adidas just kind of certified it for me. Like, this is like I'm a skateboarder, and this is what I'm gonna do. But I just think that it was a beautiful thing. Like going into Adidas, like they weren't trying to change who I was. They were just there to support me, which is the most beautiful thing as a sponsor you could do pretty much is like, we're not trying to like make you look any different, whatever. Like you, you go out there and you, you skate pretty much. And they have some of the most creative, like legendary people on their team. So it just felt right. I signed with my best friend, Jen Soto. Like we both mm. like, it's been a beautiful, like uh turnaround for both of us at that time. And it was just like one of those things where I was like, man, like, this is this is amazing like shout out adidas for like coming in and like kind of just confirming the fact that yo like i'm a skateboarder this is what i'm gonna do and it was it was great it was great how uh, i'm curious like at what point did it become a reality for you like i think i can not just hopefully skate in this contest but like skate professionally like i don't need a job like this is what i'm gonna do in 2018 when I didn't even know how to put my two weeks in at my job and I just was like I it, that confirmed it for me because a lot of amazing things happened within that time period even like I was working at my job um here in Albuquerque but I would only what, what was the job what were you doing it, it was at Dion's uh it's like this pizza spot out here and um shout out Dion's like for like, you know, working with my crazy schedule, whatever. But it was, it was, um, it was a great first job. And it was, um, I was working there for like five years. But within that time period, I like filmed with an all girls video. I like did a uh, second in, um, in uh, X Games. And I remember I was so quiet at my work. Like I didn't, I like just clocked in and out. That was like me. I'm like, I remember like my manager, like hung up, like my picture with the silver medal, like on the dashboard. And I was just like, Oh my God. Like, and they were like hyped. And they were like, they're like, man, like, aren't you like, like, isn't that it? Like, how, like, are like, can you quit your job? Or like, is this like the moment where you're going? And I'm like, honestly, like, I wish like, it's a great prize purse, but it's not, 
consistent. And for me, I was just like, you know what, I'm going to stick with this part time job. I'm going to like save up money because I've always learned that you have to like work for something. And it would just be too much pressure if I quit my job and just kept betting on myself in a contest for living money. You know, I wanted to have that little bit of security where it's like, okay, like I can mess up, whatever. But every time I'd go into work, I'd be like, yo, this is like in my head, I would be like, this is temporary. Like, this is temporary. I told myself that for like five years. And like 2018, when Adidas came along, like I, when we were working on the contract, I just kept like hitting him up like, yo, can I, can I please put my two weeks in? Can I please like, you know, like <laughs> so eager. Cause I was like, yo, this is like, I, I want to know what it's like to not work um, and just focus on skateboarding, what like that's going to take my skateboarding too. So that was kind of like where I was at. And um, that was the, the moment where I was like, yo, I'm in now. I'm locked in. The playing field is like leveled. I don't have to fundraise to get to these contests. Like I can just focus on skateboarding. And like, I was like, all right, it's done. Like I'm ready. Now I can just make pizza for me. Right, you gotta be slinging it for anybody else. In and I'll say what I have sometimes. <laughs> well, and and that's amazing too. That comes back to what I was saying before. Like I think people just assume, even when you're winning a medal, like you're standing on the podium and we're announcing your name, Mariah Duran, X Games. Like people just assume, oh, she's got it, she's made it, and they don't realize, like, you know, like even. Leo Baker, up until two years ago, they were had a full time job, you know, before becoming a, a face of Nike skateboarding and winning X Games medals. It's like, it's a grind, and and nothing's given. So it's amazing to see these opportunities and and you taking advantage of it because it's it's well deserved, Mariah. I mean, it's amazing to see these great sponsors that you have, but it's a testament, first and foremost, to to your skateboarding. Yeah, and I think that it was I think I had to work a work a part-time job to understand like mm -hmm. everything. Like cuz like of course winning a lot of money can, you know, some people don't know how to act. You know what I mean? So I think me having to work a work a part-time job kind of just understood like all right, I'm going to only like put my money to this to this save a little bit because life definitely happens. And like yeah. was, like if that would have like if that would have like came into my life any earlier on in my life, I probably wouldn't have known how to act. Um, I'm not saying that I was like crazy about uh, money and that I would spend it. Like, I'm sure like I would be fine. But I was like, when it happened, I am more in tune into like thinking about the future and about preparing for anything pretty much. You know what I mean? So um, because at the end of the day, it could just all be gone. You know what I mean? So that was kind of like it came in at the right time for me. For sure. Uh, no, you well said. I can tell you, as a matter of fact, if I was uh, working a part time job and I got invited just as an alternate to X Games, like you, I would have quit. I'd been like, peace, <laughs> I'm making it. So I think you made the smart decision. You you played the long game, and yeah. it's clearly worked out for you. Uh, hey, before I let you go, Mariah, uh, obviously it's it's disappointing. Um, you know, <laughs> it's a global pandemic. What are you going to yeah. do? Uh, you know, health, health is the main concern for all of us globally, but, um, Olympics, there's no getting around it. I, I mean, skateboarding was going to make its Olympic debut this summer. Um, you were really a, a poster child for team USA yes. skateboarding. And, uh, I, again, I, I don't know if you just felt like, Hey, it's just, it's another contest and it's got more eyes on us. It's great. But I, I don't know. How are you feeling? You know, this kind of run up of like, Oh my God, like, this is something unlike anything we've ever done before to kind of like be pulled back a little bit. So uh, first off, going into uh, like last year, 2019, when everything was kind of in, like getting into motion, um, it was more of like, I want to put myself in this unknown like area of like competing for the Olympics. Like I want to do that. I want to, even if it's crazy, even if it's, you know, not important to some people, like it, I wanted to push myself as a skateboarder and put myself in a in a scenario where I had to work for something. And to be in the Olympics is beautiful. I've done sports like all my life and I always watch the Olympics, but to be in the Olympics for skateboarding, for something that I love doing already, that I was just like, yes. Like in my head, I was like, yes, I'm definitely gonna like try because it's an opportunity like to either grow myself and also skate in the Olympics. Like who wouldn't want to do that? 
And um, I think with everything like 2019 was going and it was definitely different because it was like different in a good way. Like there was more like girls coming out. I would see a new girl every single time. And I'm like, wow, this is this is what's going to push skateboarding to the next level. And yeah, like all last year was just back to back. So many contests, everything like that. And I think it was kind of a lot, but I learned so much out of it pretty much. And um, yeah, like for it to kind of be on halt, it was kind of intense, but I think that it worked out in the best way because a lot of the time, like for me personally, I was working on a street part and I was doing contests like as well. Like I was overtime. And um, for me, like, I think that having this break, like you can't control it. You Nobody can control this. Like, of course, the Olympics didn't want to cancel. Of course. Like, why? You know what I mean? So it's like you just have to be able to adapt to, like, this scenario and right. um, just kind of just keep working towards it. That's kind of like where I'm at. Like, this whole pause made me put the brakes on, fully appreciate where I'm at and how far I've come because I was going doing so much that you don't have a lot of time to, like, appreciate what's going on because you're always going, 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 going. Whereas this this pause was like, man, like, I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I did this and how much I've grown. And um, it kind of just made me fall back in love with skateboarding. Like right now, like I'm like getting back to my 12 year old self. Like I'm like yeah. skating with my brothers, like just my brothers at my parents' house. So, like, and it's just, it's a beautiful thing. Cause I'm like, wow, this is why I originally did it. And it's like, I needed that to be reminded that, you know, cause there's a lot of pressure that comes with going for the Olympics. There's outside pressure and inside pressure. And the only thing that helped me like, is helping me like get through like this whole pandemic and on pause is kind of just the love for skateboarding. Like at the end of the day, like I'm still a skateboarder. Yeah, of course I'm still working for the Olympics and doing what I can. Um, but I'm literally just focusing on winning one day over at a time because that was a testament that nothing is promised. Like skateboarding can be paused. Like this, like the world can be paused. Like just like it almost felt like overnight. Mm -hmm. So kind of like I in all of my other interviews I was like really looking forward to myself to see who I would be in August because at this mm -hmm. time I would have already skated the, in the Olympics I mm -hmm. wanted to be that person you know what I mean and see like like how far she's come you know like I was inspired to meet myself after the wow. Olympics because I knew I was going to be so different and I, I was going to have I would be I would be forced to grow so like now that this whole thing was paused, it's not that I lost out on that opportunity, but I think I am like a better person than I was six months ago, for sure. Wow. Because I understand like gratitude and I understand like how like motivation works now and how much I love skateboarding, no matter what. Like I didn't get into skateboarding and was like, I'm gonna be in the Olympics. I got in when I was like 10 years old. Nothing was guaranteed, you know, like not like, and I'm like, this is a similar feeling. Like, this is, you just do what you love doing and just go with it, you know, ride the wave. Uh, I love it. Yeah. And the irony is you thought you'd be at the Olympics. Now you're not, but you brought yourself back to your 10 year old self skating with your brothers in your parents' backyard. That's amazing. Uh, Mariah Duran, thank you so much. Uh, real quick, actually, before I let you go, that's quite a trophy room you have there can you give us a little look at uh at what's going on on these walls here with what, what, what's uh what's what's happening so right there's like kind of like the u.s thing my mom has all the other stuff at her pad but this one that this board that has my yeah. name it, that is a golden hour and that was dedicated to the two gold medals in 2018 um and that's the new mexico sign on it and then those are the adidas shoes that i uh just dropped. Ooh, let's see it. Damn. And like, there, it's kind of cool just to remind yourself. And then I got like the street leagues trophies, and then I have like this like dresser right here it has all like my gold medals and stuff because I gotta lock those up <laughs> just in case life happens. But does, um, this, does it still trip you out that uh, your name is on a shoe? Oh yeah, like it was it was crazy because this was that was gonna be me walking into the Olympics with this shoe. Like that was what I was going for. Um, but it, it is real because it was a whole different way to to take it in. Like when it drops when the world is on frozen, 
it's more for like yourself. Like no one's mm. there to like, you don't have a big party. You know what I mean? Which would have been beautiful, but it genuinely like felt like that was what I needed because it still kept me grounded. And it like, didn't give, like, let me get a big head pretty much. It was like, wow, this is like a, another confirmation. Like this is what I'm doing. You know what I mean? So it was, um, it was really, it was really cool. And it's just like, good to kind of just remind yourself how far you you've like come that's why I kind of have all these things hung up but like my mom has a lot of this stuff at her place too because you know how moms are they like <laughs> want to hold on to everything and I'm like I need some from my room too so. <laughs> I like it man it fits you so Mariah thank you so much uh like I said I, I wish we you know had just been celebrating something huge some big win for you some x games gold medal um we'll wait till next year but uh thanks for making the time for us absolutely thank you it's so good like having a conversation with you now you know <laughs> yeah yeah it's, uh, hey great if, if a global pandemic brings us together so be it all right exactly thank you so much mariah have the best thank you you too peace Later.